What's up, people? It's Dev Sage here, and this is the fourth video in my JavaScript data structure series. In this video, we'll be going over queues. What is a queue? Well, like a stack, a queue is also a collection of elements, but it has slightly different rules. So I want you to imagine a line of people at a grocery store. This line is a queue. The first person to get in line is the first person to leave. The last person to get in line is the last person to leave. So queues are known as first in, first out, or FIFO data structures. One real world application of a queue is a print queue. You can queue up multiple print jobs and the printer will process each of those jobs in the order that it got them. So some common queue operations include in queue, which add elements to the tail of the queue or at the end of the line. And then there's DQ, which remove elements from the head of the queue or processes those people that got in line first. So let's jump into the code. So how can we represent a queue? Well, we can represent a queue in the same way that we represented a stack or a linked list. We can create our own custom data structure for it. So let's do that. So let's say class queue and let's create our constructor for our queue and like stacks, we can use an array as the basis or the foundation of our queue as well. So let's create an array. So let's say this.items equals the empty array. And this array is going to represent our queue, and we're going to perform our queue operations on this array, this.items. So uh, let, me, let me give some uh, sample um, numbers here. So the end of the array is going to represent the back of our queue. This is where we're going to in queue or add elements to this array, to this queue. Whereas the beginning of the queue, the beginning of the array, this is where we're going to remove elements from. Remember, a queue is like a, a, a line in the grocery store. The people who got here first get to leave first. And the people that got here last have to wait until the people before them leave. So one got added first. So the first element to be removed is going to be one. And then two. And then three. Oops. And then if somebody wants to jump in line, like six or seven, they have to be added at the end of the queue. So that's just a little visual representation of how that's going to work. So now we need to add our in queue and DQ methods. So let's add in queue, which is going to add an element to the queue. So we're going to need to add to the end. So we need to say this dot items dot push value. And that's it. We've just added a new element to the end of our queue. So now we need to do DQ, which is removing an element from our queue. We need to perform a check to see if the queue is empty or not, because we can't remove anything from an empty queue. So we need to say if this.items.length greater than zero, then we return this.items.shift remember shift from our arrays section shift removes the first item in an array and that's what we want our DQ function to do and that's pretty much it so we have NQ and DQ we can also add a peak method so that we can peak at the value that's going to be removed next from our queue so we need to say uh, let's let's create that so let's say if this dot items dot length 
greater than zero, then let's return this dot items at index zero. So if our queue is not empty, then we return the first item. That's the item that's been sitting in our queue the longest. The first item that's going to leave when we dequeue. And now I guess we, we still need a way to actually print out the values of this queue. So let's add a print method. So let's say print and let's uh, let's say for let i equals zero, we're going to start from the beginning of the array and move backwards. Um, i is less than this dot items dot length i plus plus and let's console log um, this dot items at index i and that should be it we have nq dq peak and print so yeah let's let's go down and let's create a new instance of our queue so let's say const q i'm just going to say q equals new q so now let's add some elements to our queue so let's say q dot in q um 10 and let's add 20 and 30. and now let's print our queue so let's say q dot print and let's say node index.js all right so we have 10 20 and 30. now let's uh let's dequeue an element from our queue since 10 was the first element that was added 10 is going to be the first element that leaves when we dequeue so if we said q dot dq we should just be left with 20 and 30 and boom that's what we're left with here so if we were to dq again 20 came in before 30 so that means 20 should be removed oops i, I forgot to save let me run this again okay now we're left with 30. 30 was the last element to be added so 30 is still on the queue because we've only dequeued twice all right so what happens if we try to enqueue again so if we enqueue let's say 40 40 should come after 30 in this case because 40 is going to be added to the back of the line all right so nq works dq works let's test out peak so if we were to console log uh, q dot peak we should get 30 because 30 is the next element that would be removed when dq is called so let's uh save it and we have 30 here which is coming from our print statement here and then we have 30 and 40 which are coming from q dot print here so that works let me const let me uh, comment that out just to make it more clear yeah there it is so q dot peak returns 30 and yeah so nq dq peak and print and that's a little bit about queues in javascript if you like this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more content of mine. I'm trying to post weekly from now on. Uh, so if you want to keep track of what I'm doing, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified. Uh, if you want the code for this, the GitHub link is in the description. So go down there, start the repository, follow me if you want, but the code's going to be in the description. Um, but other than that, peace.